सो गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर विनीत सहगल एंड वी वुड बी टेकिंग अ सेशन टुडे ऑन द वीडियो बेस्ड क्वेश्चन सो वी वुड बी स्टार्टिंग द मेडिकल मैराथन सून एंड द फर्स्ट लेक्चर हैज ऑलरेडी बीन डन सो द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू इज दैट वाई दिस वीडियो बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आर इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इन द न्यू पैटर्न इन द ऑनलाइन एग्जाम वॉट दे कैन डू इज दैट दे कैन जस्ट पुट अ स्मॉल वीडियो क्लिप लेट से अ सर्जरी लाइक दिस and they can ask you that which is this what is the diagnostic procedure so i think that you are in the third prof when uh, uh, your ophthalmology sessions were going on so uh, you may not be able to uh, identify them right now but i would basically see make you see few of the important procedures that that can be asked in the video based questions and uh, hope you would like the session and any query you can ask us we would be there for to help you okay so this is the first video clip you can see the procedure that is going on so try to answer what it is is it direct ophthalmoscopy no. indirect ophthalmoscopy usg or retinoscopy try to answer so this video clip that i have showed you this is basically an indirect ophthalmoscopy now we would see this video clip again see this is the indirect ophthalmoscope this is the condensing lens and with this light i am seeing the retina so basically indirect ophthalmoscope is used to see the periphery of the retina there is a gear how to identify i would i would not give you the uh, the say, the tip the important theory part of the these videos i would just let you know how to identify so in an indirect ophthalmoscope there is a gear like this which the examiner wears on the head and there is a convex lens can you see here this is the lens and through which the examiner sees the retina okay so this is how to identify an indirect ophthalmoscope now this is the second video see what i am doing so what is this procedure that is going on your options are indirect ophthalmoscopy direct ophthalmoscopy gonioscopy or ultrasound so this is basically a direct ophthalmoscopy that is going on just see again what we are doing this is a direct ophthalmoscope okay and with this direct ophthalmoscope i am going towards the patient okay so i am going towards the patient and seeing it remember that in indirect ophthalmoscope the indirect ophthalmoscope is mounted on the head and then the light is basically thrown to the eye of the patient and we see with the condensing lens in direct ophthalmoscope we go directly with this ophthalmoscope into very close to the eyes with our right eye we basically see the right eye of the patient with our left eye what we can do is that we can see the left eye of the patient this was a pgi question also okay so now remember the pgi 
exam is also going to be online so you may get a image based question or video based question there also okay now see this procedure what is going on so this is basically a slit lamp examination that is going on see this is the eyepiece this is the patient this is the chin rest this is the head rest and what we are doing is with the joystick i am moving the slit lamp making the slit and seeing the patient so this instrument per se is called slit lamp examination now what we can do with slit lamp we can do an anterior segment examination and with some lenses like a 90d or 78 diopter lenses what we can do is we can do a posterior segment evaluation also so slit lamp can do anterior segment evaluation cataract evaluation as well as posterior segment evaluation only thing that slit lamp cannot do is a corneal topography measurement okay for that we have other instruments like placido disc keratoscope like your pentacam like your ob scan but all other things can be done with the slit lamp also remember that slit lamp is also used in doing the procedures like aplanation tonometry and gonioscopy okay we would show you how the aplanation tonometry and gonioscopy is done okay now see this procedure what we are doing so your options are cover uncover test alternate cover test retinoscopy or hirschberg test try to answer so i would show you the video again see the video again what i am doing first my hand is occluding one eye and then it is occluding the other eye so this is basically so this is basically a alternate cover test so first i am occluding one eye then i am occluding the other eye okay this is alternate cover test and why it is used where it is used it is basically used to see the type of squint present so it recognizes the foria as well as tropia so for foria is basically a hidden deviation which is not manifest because of the let's say fusion capacity of the eye let's say we are seeing here okay so let's say i am seeing here in the center okay i am fusing at my pen so i won't be able to see my eyes would be fusing here and they are not diverging but as soon as i remove the fusion my eyes divert so this is called a foria okay and 
the tropia is something which is manifest deviation so in alternate cover test what happens is that what we do is we do an alternate fixation okay we do an alternate fixation so the patient is whether the patient has poria or tropia we can know in alternate cover test the second test is a cover uncover test now see this test i am telling the patient to see forwards okay and then i am covering and uncovering the eye see again i am telling the patient to see straight and then i am first i cover the eye and then i uncover the eye so basically i am seeing the movement of the eye which is covered okay and this is called cover uncover test so i told you that there are two types of test they look similar but their main aim is different the alternate cover test can detect both forias and tropias the cover uncover test is basically done to know about the type of tropias tropias means a manifest deviation okay so tropias basically tell you the manifest deviation and the forias are hidden deviations okay you get my point what is the difference between the forias and the tropias so forias are basically examined by the alternate cover test and tropias are basically examined by the cover uncover test there is another test which shows the amount of squint and that is called hirschberg test so in hirschberg test what we do is we just present the light okay just a torch light and we see the pupillary reflex okay so where is the pupillary reflex is it at the limbus is it at the edge of pupil or it where is it at the middle of the iris so basically seeing the pupillary reflex and its position we can tell that what is the amount of squint and what is the type of squint okay now see another procedure that is going on so basically i am putting something in the cornea okay and i am seeing through the slit lamp i show you the video again so see what i am doing i am with the help of slit lamp i am putting this instrument see the instrument i am showing you the instrument again see this instrument this is the instrument that i am putting in the front of the eye at the cornea this is called basically a four mirror indirect 
गोनियोस्कोप ओके रिमेंबर दिस इज नॉट एन एप्लानेशन प्रिज्म एप्लानेशन प्रिज्म इज समथिंग विच इज माउंटेड ऑन स्लिट लैम्प एंड देन इट टचेस द कॉर्निया एंड यू हैव अ कोबाल्ट ब्लू फिल्टर देयर एंड यू सी इल्यूमिनेटेड प्रिज्म ऑफ द एप्लानेशन हेयर यू आर पुटिंग समथिंग विच इज जस्ट अ गोनियोस्कोप इन द कॉर्निया ओके एंड वॉट गोनियोस्कोपी डज इज गोनियोस्कोपी मेजर्स द एंगल्स ऑफ द आई इट टेल्स यू वेदर द पेशेंट इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम ओपन एंगल ग्लोकोमा और एंगल क्लोजर ग्लोकोमा ओके सो दिस इज अ गोनियोस्कोपी that is being carried out so for gonioscopy you require a gonioscope and you require a slit lamp you require both the things now see this procedure that is going on so what is this procedure that is going on i would show you again so this is basically a phaco emulsification that is going on so see this is the phaco emulsification probe this is the nucleus this is the nucleus which we are basically cracking through a phaco emulsification probe and then with this phaco emulsification probe we also aspirate it okay so this is a phaco emulsification going on how to differentiate it with what are the other type of cataract surgeries that we can do so we can also do a small incision cataract surgery a ecce also so basically in small incision cataract surgery we make a scleral tunnel and then we go in from the scleral tunnel to the anterior chamber we do the steps of the cataract surgery and with a scoop we basically remove the nucleus there is nothing like this probe that is put inside the eye okay so that is how you can differentiate between an sics and a phaco similarly in ecc here also you make a corneal incision at the limbus and or a limbal incision and there you go inside and remove the nucleus so that is how ecc is done SICS with a scleral tunnel, and when you take this probe inside eye with the ultrasound energy, you basically remove the nucleus, and then you basically chop the nucleus, and then you aspirate it. This is a phaco emulsification. surgery that is going on now you would be able to recognize an sics with an ecc with a phaco emulsification now see what is the procedure i am doing here i am telling the patient to see straight and i am just neutralizing the reflex with this instrument so this is basically what i am doing is retinoscopy 
डोंट कंफ्यूज इट विद द डायरेक्ट ऑफ थेलमोस्कोपी द डायरेक्ट ऑफ थेलमोस्कोप ऑल्सो लुक्स लाइक दैट बट देर इज अ डिफरेंस सी दिस इज अ स्ट्रीक see the distance and i am at 1 meter with the lens i am neutralizing the reflex okay so this is basically a retinoscopy that is going on also see what is a direct ophthalmoscopy direct ophthalmoscopy is also the same lens but it is more of a rounded oval type of instrument and i am going and seeing going very close to the eye and seeing the posterior pole of the patient so don't confuse between the direct ophthalmoscopy and a retinoscopy okay now here tell me what is the procedure that is going on lifting the conjunctiva making the scleral flap and then making a opening in the sclera small opening so your options are small incision cataract surgery ecc pterygium or a trabeculectomy try to answer see the video again so is it an sics is it an ecc is it a pterygium or is it a filtering surgery so absolutely perfect dr deepanchu this is a filtering surgery that is going on this is a trabeculectomy that we are doing so basically what happens in trabeculectomy we first make a incision in the conjunctiva we go inside and then we make a triangular or quadrangular partial thickness scleral flap i lift the flap and make the opening in the sclera which communicates with the anterior chamber so what i make is an ostium ostium means opening in the sclera that communicates with the anterior chamber through this what we do is that we basically go and we make a opening or a channel for the anterior the aqueous humor to flow down okay so this is basically a trabeculectomy that is going on now see what is the procedure that is going on so is it an indirect ophthalmoscopy a direct ophthalmoscopy a usg or a pentacan try to answer in chat section i show you the video again 
is an indirect ophthalmoscopy direct ophthalmoscopy usg specular or pentacam so this is basically a usg see i am putting the probe over the closed eyelid i am putting the probe over the closed eyelid and see here the image comes of the posterior segment can you appreciate the image of the posterior segment this is the sclera and the choroid and the innermost is retina and this black space is vitreous so this is basically a ultrasound b scan b means the brightness b scan that is going on and this is basically done in which cases where you cannot see the fundus it is the investigation of choice for endophthalmitis okay okay now see this video what we are doing we are going inside you can see the posterior pole you can see the optic nerve head you can see some laser spots also so what is the procedure that is going on so your options are intravitreal injection electroretinogram vitrectomy or enucleation try to answer in the comment section see the video again what i am doing i am going inside the eye removing something let's say there is a white cortical matter inside so this is basically a vitrectomy that is going on okay so in vitrectomy what we do is that we make a ports two ports or two openings in the sclera we basically put our instruments inside one is an illuminator which illuminates the retina and with the other illuminator as you can see here that we are removing the vitreous and any cortical matter so let's say there is a nucleus drop during a cataract surgery or let's say there is a tractional retinal detachment let's say there is a regmatogenous retinal detachment so we can remove the vitreous we can break seal the break with photocoagulation and then we can put oil or gas to make a tamponade so that the retina gets attached or in the cases of nucleus drop we can remove any foreign body or a nucleus inside the vitreous so this is a vitrectomy that is going on remember in a intravitreal injection what happens is that let's say this is i so we just put with a 26 gauge needle a uh, antibiotic or a uh, let's say a steroid inside the vitreous chamber of the eye from 4 mm from the limbus okay so that is basically a intravitreal injection you get my point
now see what is the procedure that is going on is it a goldman visual field humphrey visual field hess chart or emsler chart is it a goldman technical team i just want 2 minutes more goldman humphrey emsler chart or a hess chart see the video again the patient head is in a chamber and he is she is basically pressing some buttons so this is basically a humphrey visual field that is going on see this is basically a head inside the bowl and whenever the stimulus comes the patient basically presses the button so this is a humphrey visual field that is going on remember in goldman visual field what happens is that there is a bowl and the the examiner has to draw the the fields or the isopters of the vision it is not an automated parametry the goldman is a manual parametry and this is an automated parametry wherever the patient puts the button we get on the screen okay so last slide last video see what i am doing first i am staining the cornea with the fluorescein strip a technical team i just want 1 minute more and then i am basically switching off the light putting on blue color and telling the patient to see straight and touching the cornea so what is the procedure that is going on is it a gonioscopy applanation tonometry tono pen or a direct ophthalmoscopy try to answer so this is basically a applanation tonometry that is going on remember applanation tonometry is done with the help of a slit lamp and what we do is that we stain the cornea we anesthetize the cornea and with this prism this is the prism that i am using okay this is the prism that i am using and i am going and putting the stain inside the cornea and then i see green colored myers okay so where the green colored myers oppose this reading that comes tells us about the eye pressure okay so this is a applanation tonometry remember what happens in tono pen there is just a instrument like this okay here there are the readings you touch the tip at the cornea and you see what is the reading that is coming on the screen so that is how a tono pen is used there is no slit lamp used there and no fluorescein strip that is basically used for staining the conjunctiva used there tono pen is basically used only in the cases where there is a scarred cornea or you cannot use a slit lamp there okay so that is how the applanation tonometry is done thank you very much for attending the session uh we are just 5 minutes out of time so these are some important videos that i have shown you hope they would help you in understanding the topic also and you would be able to basically answer the video based questions 
we would be putting more and more videos uh, in our and more and more advancements in the way of teaching for you in the unacademy platform it is the only platform where you can have live sessions we are going to have medical marathon right now you can basically enroll with the unacademy course with just 999 for a month with my referral code that is vinit sehgal rpc aims 4415 any doubts any help you want from us let us know okay all the best take care